If you have kids in your life that like to dress up their dolls, then you know how important accessories are to them. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make an accessory for your doll that is a wardrobe staple here in Canada. It's an ear flap hat. This cute little hat is easy to make and it's accessible for beginners. And I'm going to show you today how to make this step by step through crocheting the hat, changing your colors, as well as making your pom pom. This pattern is week 8 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along and is available as a free written pattern as well on my blog theloopylam.com. So let's go over the materials that we're going to need in order to follow along with today's tutorial. All right, so today we are going to be making this cute little ear flap hat for our Advent Adam dolls. And to follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need a worsted weight yarn in your color of preference. Uh, you're gonna need it in two different colors. I'm using Wee Crochet's Bravo worsted weight yarn, and I've got the colors Mint and Tranquil here. You're going to need a one and five eighths inch uh, pompa maker. This is the yellow clover pompa maker. It comes in a package of, you know, two or three different pom, pom maker sizes. You're going to need a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook or whatever size hook you've been using for the crochet along this far. You're going to need a stitch marker, a tapestry needle, as well as a pair of scissors. So let me clear my workspace here and we'll get ready to get started making our ear flap hat for our doll. To start making our ear flap hat, we're going to start by using our yarn in the darker of the two colors. For me, that is the color Tranquil. If you saw my uh, sample in the original, I've got two different colors here. I've got the color Celestial, which is a dark blue, and the color White. So this Tranquil color here is taking the place of our blue in the hat. So to start, we're going to create a magic circle. And to do that, we're going to take the tail end of our yarn and pin it down on our palm here. Then we're going to take the working yarn and wrap it around our fingers, bring it up over itself and create an X. Then we're going to flip our hands over and then we're going to pin the working down, yarn down with our ring finger between the uh, pointer and ring finger here. Then we're going to grab our crochet hook and we're going to insert it under the first strand, over the second strand, and then we're gonna pull that second strand out and under the first. Then we're going to twist our crochet hook like so, so that way we create this cross in the yarn that you see here. Now we're going to angle our hook to pick up the second strand that's pinned between our fingers here and yarn over hook and pull that through the loop that's on our hook. And now we're ready to remove the magic circle from our fingers. If you need to see this done in a uh, slower fashion, you can find a full tutorial uh, done slower here on the channel. So now we're ready to start with round one of our doll's ear flap hat. So we're going to work six single crochets into our magic ring. To do that, we're going to insert our hook into the magic ring, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And that's your single first single crochet completed. Now we're going to have to do that five more times. So we're going to insert our hook into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops, and that's your second single crochet completed. And so we're going to do this four more times for a total of six single crochets. So there's our third. Fourth. Fifth. And sixth. Now that we have our six single crochets, we're going to grab the tail here of our magic circle and we're going to pull that tight. And this closes up our magic circle and your project should now look like this, creating this little U shape. Now grab your stitch marker because you're going to be needing this in just a moment as we move into round two. To start round two, we're going to place uh, two single crochets into the first stitch of the last round. But we need our stitch marker to 
place into our first stitch to make sure that we're always keeping track of the first stitch of the round. So we're going to insert our hook under both loops of that first stitch there. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet completed. And I'm grabbing my stitch marker and I'm placing that into the completed stitch. And now I'm going to make another single crochet into this stitch. And when we place two single crochet stitches into the same stitch, that's called a single crochet increase. And so we're going to insert a hook back into the first stitch, the same stitch we just worked into, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's our second single crochet completed. And now we're going to do a single crochet increase into each stitch around. So again, that means two single crochets worked into the same stitch and we're going to do it in every stitch. So into the next stitch here, we're going to single crochet once and then back into that same stitch and single crochet a second time. And then into the next stitch, we're placing two single crochets again so there's our first and our second. And we're going to repeat this all the way around our piece. At the end of this round, you should have 12 single crochet stitches. So again, two stitches into the next. There's one single crochet and two into the next stitch, one, and two, and into the last stitch, one, and two. So when you're looking at your piece and you take a look at the tops of your stitches and you see those little Vs, you're going to count them around starting in the one with the stitch marker and you're going to count 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now at the end of every round, you should take a moment to count your stitches to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches before moving on. And so um, in the next round, we're going to start changing our colors. So when we change colors, we wanna use the last yarn over of the last stitch. So we've completed that last stitch, but I'm going to take that last stitch out and I'm going to show you how to change colors. So we, we've got half of our single crochet increase in this last stitch and we're going back into that stitch to start our second single crochet of our increase. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop this old yarn and I'm going to bring in the new color. So for me, that new color is that lighter color here, that mint, and we're going to do a yarn over our hook with this new color. Now you'll see I'm using a slip, um, slip knot on my hook. You don't have to do that. Uh, I just do it because it's a little more secure on the camera. So we're going to yarn over hook, then we're gonna pull that new, with the new color and we're pulling that new color through both loops to finish the stitch. And now we can move on to the next round. So we're gonna move our stitch marker out of the way and we're ready to continue crocheting. So for round three, we're going to start by placing one single crochet into the first stitch. So into the first stitch, we single crochet in the new color. Then we're going to bring in our stitch marker and place that into the stitch. Now, before I go on, I want to note that you can cut the old color now if you'd like. However, because we have uh, quite a few stripes in the hat, uh, you do have the option of um, carrying your yarn up and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, if you don't want to weave in the ends, then um, you want to carry your yarn up and I'll show you that. However, if you don't mind weaving in the ends, you can cut the old yarn and um, bring it back in later, okay? So we've got our first stitch here of round three and we're going to work a single crochet increase into our next stitch here. And again, that single crochet increase is two single crochets worked into the same stitch. So there's one and two. And now we're going to work one single crochet into the next stitch and two single crochets into the next. Again, that single crochet increase. We're going to repeat this pattern of one single crochet into the first stitch, 
two single crochets or a single crochet increase into the next stitch all the way around our piece. And I'll show you that repeat one more time. We're going to single crochet once into the first stitch and single crochet increase into the next. So if you'd like to pause your video and work the rest of the round in that repeat of one single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet increase into the next, when you're at the end of this round, you should have 18 single crochet stitches. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm at the end of round three, I have my 18 stitches and I'm ready to move on to round four. To start round four, I'm gonna move that stitch marker out of the way and I'm going to single crochet once into that first stitch. Now I'm going to move up my stitch marker. We're going to continue to move this stitch marker up in every consecutive round to mark that first stitch. Now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And again, that's those two single crochets done in the same stitch. And now we have a repeat that we're going to do a total of five times. And I'll show you that repeat now. We're going to single crochet once into each of the first two stitches. So here's our first and then our second. And then we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next. And that is our repeat. We're going to do two single crochets followed by a single crochet increase four more times. We should have this repeat five times total this round. So we're going to do that again. We're going to do a single crochet once into each of the next two stitches, followed by a single crochet increase into the next. So if you'd like to pause your video and do this repeat three more times, and once again, that repeat is one single crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by an increase. I'll meet you back here when we're done our repeats. We should have one stitch in the round left to be worked, and I'll show you what we do when we get there. So I just finished my last of my repeats and I have one stitch left to be worked in this round. And I'm going to uh, work into this stitch like I'm starting a single crochet, but I know I need to change colors in my next round. So we're going to finish off in our new, in our new oh, technically old color. <laughs> so we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch here, yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to have two loops on our hook and then I'm going to drop that uh, the lighter color yarn and I'm ready to bring in the new colored yarn. Now if you cut your yarn you'll just drape your new color over the hook to do a yarn over and then you'll cr crochet as normal. However I'm pull I'm going to carry my yarn up the inside of my piece. Now it's a little tricky to see because I've got the yarn tails here but what I've done is I've picked up the darker color and I'm just going to loosely bring it up to where I'm crocheting and then I'm yarning over and pulling that through the stitch. Now this does create a little line of tails on the inside of your hat. Let me grab my other hat here and show you. Turn this inside out. So it does create a little line of tails in the inside of your hat. However, um, I'm okay with that because that means I don't have to weave in all of these ends. But again, that's up to you. If you don't want those lines on the inside, you can totally just cut your yarn and uh, yarn over hook with the new color and move on. So we're ready to move on to round five. In the end of round 20, uh, round four, sorry, we have 24 stitches where we've got our new color and we're now moving on. So for round five, we have a repeat that we're going to do all the way around. And I'll show you how we're going to do that now. So we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So working into this first stitch, we'll single crochet and move up our stitch marker. Then we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that is our pattern repeat. We're going to do three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase 
all the way around our piece. We're going to repeat this a total of six times. So I'll show you how to do that again. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So there's one, two, and three and single crochet increase into the next stitch. And I'll show you that one more time. One single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So there's one and three, followed by a single crochet increase into the next. So uh, if you'd like to pause your video now and do the last three repeats, of three single crochets followed by an increased stitch. At the end of round five, you should have 30 stitches. And I'll meet you back here at the end of the round and show you how we're moving on into round six. So I just finished my last stitch of round five. I have 30 stitches and I'm ready to move on to round six. For round six, we're going to start this off by placing one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So working into our first stitch here, we're going to single crochet and move up our stitch marker. Then we're going to place one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Again, that's those two single crochets done in the same stitch. And now we have a repeat that we're going to be doing a total of five times around our piece. And that repeat is four single crochets followed by an increase. And I'll show you how to do that now. So we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. So there's one, three, and four. And then we're going to single crochet increase into the next. And that is our first repeat completed. And I'll show you that again. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Two. And four. And now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and do three more repeats of four single crochets followed by an increase, you should have two stitches left to be worked in this round. And I'll meet you back here when, and show you how to do that when we're done our, in, our repeats. So I just finished my fifth repeat of those four single crochets followed by an increase and I have two stitches left here to be worked in my round and I'm going to place one single crochet into the first stitch. And into the second stitch I'm going to start my single crochet but I'm going to have to change colors so I'm going to need to finish that single crochet in the new color. So that means I'm going to start my single with the, this dark color here, drop the old color, and then I'm going to bring up the new color. Again, you don't want to pull this too tight in the back because it'll um, warp your fabric and kind of cinch it together. So just loosely bringing that new color up, yarning over and pulling it through the loop. Okay, and I'll do that one more time. So I'm going to loosely bring up the old color I don't want to cinch it or have it pull too tight on, on you there. And you're going to yarn over hook in the new color and pull that through the two loops on your hook. Then you're ready to move on to the next round. So we're moving into round seven and we have a repeat that we're going to do a total of five, uh, six times. And that I'll show you that repeat now. We're going to place one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So I've got my first stitch done and I'm moving up my stitch marker. And I'm going to place one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. See so here's one. And four. And I'm going to single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that is our first repeat of five single crochets followed by an increase. So I'm going to do this five more times and I'll show you again. I'm going to place one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So there's one, three, 
and five. And now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second repeat done, and we now have to do this four more times. So I'll show you one last time. One single crochet into each of the first five stitches. Followed by a single crochet increase into the next. And that's our third repeat completed. We now have to do this three more times. At the end of round seven, you should have 42 single crochet stitches. So if you'd like to pause your video and do your repeats now, I'll meet you back here at the end of round seven and show you how we're going to start with row, uh, round eight. So I just finished my last stitch of round seven and I'm moving on to round eight. I'm going to move my stitch marker out of the way here. And I'm going to place one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So I'm going to single crochet once into the first stitch and move my stitch marker up. And now I'm going to place one single crochet into the next two stitches. And now I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And again, that's those two single crochets done in the same stitch. Now I have a repeat here that we're going to repeat five times. And our repeat is six single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna work one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. So there's one, three, and six. Now that I have my six single crochets completed, I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that is our first repeat done. We have to do this four more times, and I'll show you how to do that again. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. followed by a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So that's our next repeat done. We're going to do this one more time. We're going to place one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And now we'll single crochet increase into the next. And that's our next repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and do that repeat two more times, you should have three stitches left to be worked when you're done your repeat. And I'll meet you back here when I'm done to show you what we're gonna be doing in those last three stitches. So I've done my last repeat of those six single crochets followed by an increase, and I have three stitches left to be worked in my round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. There's one and two. And now in this last stitch, I'm going to be changing colors for my next round. So I'm going to start my single crochet in this current color. Then I'm going to drop this color and very loosely I'm going to grab the darker color, bring it up to where I'm crocheting and then yarn over hook and pull that through the loops on my hook. And I'm ready to move on to, with my new color into the next round. And so we're moving into round nine now and I'm going to move my stitch marker here. And I forgot to mention at the end of round eight here, we should have 48 single crochet stitches. Now moving into round nine, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first 11 stitches. So I'm gonna place my first stitch here. There's the first move up my stitch marker. Then I'm going to single crochet into the next 10 stitches. There's three, five, seven, nine,
and here's 11. So that's our 11 total single crochets. All right, so you see we've got 11 in these, this new color here. And now we're going to place a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Now this is our repeat that we're going to do around our piece and we're going to do this repeat a total of four times. So we've got it done once, we're going to do it three more times and that repeat is 11 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And I'll show you that repeat again, one single crochet into each of the first 11 stitches. There's one, two, five, Seven, nine, and eleven. And then we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Now we're going to do this repeat two more times. We're going to do eleven single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So if you'd like to pause your video and do that two more times, I'll meet you at the end of the round and show you how we're moving on to round 10. At the end of round nine, you should have 52 single crochet stitches. So I just finished the last stitch of round nine and I'm ready to move into round 10. For round 10, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. There won't be any changes in stitch count, so at the end of round 10, we'll still have 52 stitches. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker and work one single crochet into that first stitch move up our stitch marker, and then one single crochet into each remaining stitch around. If you'd like to pause your video and do all of your single crochets except for the last stitch, I'm going to show you how to change colors before moving into the next round. So go ahead and do 51 single crochets all the way around the piece, and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. So I'm at the end of round 10. I have one last stitch to be worked and I'm changing colors before moving into round 11. So I'm going to insert my hook into that last stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop like I'm doing my single crochet. I'm gonna drop the old color, pick up the new color. And again, because I'm, I'm uh, carrying my yarn, I don't wanna pull this tight. I just want it to loosely yarn over and pull through both loops. So now I'm ready to move on to round 11. Rounds 11 and 12 are both done the same way. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. And at the end of round 12, we're going to change colors in going into the next round. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds 11 and 12, I'll meet you back here when we're doing the last stitch of round 12 so I can show you how to change colors moving into round 13. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. I've done rounds 11 and 12, and I'm just about to do my last stitch of round 12 here, and I'm changing colors moving into round 13. So I'm going to insert my hook into the last stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop in the current color. Then I'm going to drop the current color, loosely pick up the dark color from the back, just making sure I don't have a tangle back there. Loosely bringing that uh, new color up, yarning over, Goodness, my sorry, my stitch marker is getting in the way here. So I'm going to uh, yarn over and pull the new color through the two loops on my hook. And remember, just don't do that too tightly so that way you're not um, putting tension on your fabric. So we're ready to move into round 13. And for rounds 13 through 16, they're all done the same way. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. We're no longer going to be using the old color. So if you'd like to cut your old color and uh, weave in your ends with that, that's totally a uh, cool time to do that now. I'm moving up my stitch marker with my first stitch of the round. And again, we're just going to do rounds 13, 14, 15, and 16, all in this uh, darker color here. So if you'd like to pause your video and work rounds 13 through 16, one single crochet into each stitch around. I'll meet you back here at the end of round 16 and show you how we're going to move on. And again, you can cut the lighter color now. We will not be using it any longer um, for the crocheting of the hat. 
So I'll meet you back here in just a few moments. So I just finished my last stitch of round 16 and I'm ready to finish off on this part of my hat before starting with my uh, ear flaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to leave a tail of probably about four to six inches. Six is better, uh, but if you want to do four, you can do that. I'm just going to cut my yarn here and I'm going to grab a tapestry needle and have that handy because I'm going to be needing that for my next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my hook and I'm going to pull the yarn all the way through my stitch. And I'm going to grab my tapestry needle here and I'm going to thread the yarn tail onto the tapestry needle. And now we're, what we're going to be doing is called an invisible join or an invisible finish. And it's going to use our yarn tail to duplicate the look of the first stitch and minimize the look of the step that we have between our last stitch and the first stitch of the round. So I'm going to move my stitch marker out of the way and I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to insert it from front to back under both loops of the second stitch of the round. And I'm going to pull that yarn tail all the way through to the back of the fabric. And I want it to um, have enough tension that it looks like it's the front loop of the first stitch, right? So I'm gonna maintain tension in the back here with my fingers. Okay. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it through the last stitch of the round. I'm going to put it from the top of the stitch through to the back, picking up the back loop only. Okay, so I'll show you that again, going through the top, pick up the back loop only of the stitch. I'm going to pull the needle all the way through, not through the yarn. You want to go under the yarn or else you'll have a knot. And I'm pulling that yarn tail through. And then I'm going to pull my yarn tail until the yarn that I've used, my yarn tail here, looks just like the first stitch of the round. So it's almost undiscernible or indiscernible between um, knowing what if it's there or if it's just your yarn tail. So at this point you can weave in your ends with this and we're going to need some stitch markers for our next uh, part here. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to grab a couple of stitch markers. I'm going to need at least two stitch markers for this next point. So now that I have my invisible finish done, I need to have two stitch markers because I need to mark where I'm going to start my ear flaps. And I've already done that here, um, but I'm still going to show you how, how to do it. So I left the tail in here where so I could still find my first stitch because once I've done my invisible finish, it can be tricky to find. But I know that this stitch here is my first stitch of the round. And now I'm going to count over eight stitches and place a stitch marker in the eighth stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now that I have my stitch marker here in stitch eight, I need to place another stitch marker in stitch 36. So I'm going to count over from eight. So I've got eight, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and there's 36 and I have my stitch marker here in round 36. And I'm ready to start my first ear flap now. And I'm going to be needing my darker of the two colors to do that. You're going to start with a slip knot because we're going to be doing a special kind of join called the single crochet join. And that starts off with a slip knot. So we're going to grab our tail end of our yarn and we're going to wrap it around our fingers like we're doing a magic circle. We're going to create an X and flip our fingers over and pin it down. Then I'm going to use my hook and go under the first strand over the second and pull the second strand underneath the first. Then I'm just going to use my hook to pull all of that yarn off of my fingers, transferring it to the hook. Then I'm going to pull on my yarn tails and tighten that up to the hook. You want to make sure you've got some fluidity of movement here for our next part of our project. So we're going to start with ear flap one and we're going to be looking at stitch 36. 
And now um, I know that this is stitch 36 here. It's ideally you'd have two different stitch markers, but um, I do know that this is stitch 36. So I'm going to move my stitch marker out of the way and then I'm going to insert my hook with the slip knot already on my hook into stitch 36. I'm just grabbing my yarn here. So now that I have my slip knot on my hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull up the loop through that stitch and I now have two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook and now I have a standing single crochet and can continue uh, to work in round one, uh, row one of the ear flap. Now the reason we use this join instead of a slip stitch join is because when you use a slip stitch join you have to do a slip stitch then chain one and then your stitch and it can be uh, a, quite a bit bulkier than what we've just done here. So now we're going to move on with the rest of row one. We're going to place one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So here's one. Three, four, and seven. Now um, we should have a total of eight single crochet stitches and now we're ready to move on to row two. So I'm going to chain up one by yarning over and pulling up a loop and then I'm going to turn my work so that the wrong side of the fabric is now facing me. And so for row two, we're going to do what's called a single crochet decrease. And to do that, we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're going to insert our hook into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's your single crochet decrease completed. Now we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So we're going to do one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to do another single crochet decrease. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops and that's your decrease completed. At the end of row two now you should have six single crochet stitches. Now we're going to yarn over our hook and chain up one and we're going to turn our work so now the right side of the fabric is facing us. Now we're going to do start with row three with another single crochet decrease. So we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, Insert a hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So there's your first stitch. And there's your second. And then we're going to end this round by doing another single crochet decrease. So we're going to insert a hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Three loops are on your hook, then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's the end of this round. At the end of row three you should have four single crochet stitches. So then we're going to yarn over hook and pull through the loop on our hook to chain one and turn our work. And now the wrong side of the fabric is facing us. And so for row four, we're going to do two single crochet decreases. So we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. Now we're going to do another single uh, crochet decrease. So insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. At the end of row four, you should have two single crochet stitches. Now we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And we are going to do one single crochet decrease here for row five. So insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. You should have one single crochet stitch. And if I flatten my piece here, you can see that we have decreased our piece into a point. So now we're going to cut our yarn, leave a tail of probably four to six inches here. And then we're going to pull that yarn tail all the way through the last stitch to finish off. And that is our first ear flap. So now we're going to turn our piece around. We're going to be working on the other side of the hat and we're going to do another single crochet uh, join. So again, we're going to take our tail and we're going to wrap it around our finger, crossing it over just like our magic circle, flip it over. Then we're going to take our hook, insert it under the first strand over the second and pull it under the first strand and then pull all of the yarn off of your hook or off of your fingers and onto the hook. Pull your tails tight and then tighten the slip knot up on your hook here. So now we're ready to do our single crochet join. So now that we've got our slip knot on our hook, we're going to insert our hook into the uh, eighth stitch here of round 16. I'm going to move this stitch marker out of the way here so we can see what we are doing. So we've, I'm going to do that one more time. We've got our slip knot on our hook. We're going to insert our hook into stitch eight of round 16. And then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. And there's your single crochet join completed. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. And now that we have our seven stitches, we're at the end of row one and we're ready to move on to row eight. With our single crochet join it added to our seven stitches we just did, we should have eight stitches total. So now we're going to yarn over hook and pull up a loop to chain one and turn our work. The wrong side of the fabric should now be facing you. So now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. We're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should now have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So here's one, three, and four. So now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. We're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the second, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That is the end of row two, and we should have six single crochet stitches. So we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. The right side of the fabric is now facing us, and we're going to start row three with a single crochet decrease. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and that is your single crochet decrease completed. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches and we're going to end this round or row with a single crochet decrease. So insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the second, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook, completing our single crochet decrease. At the end of row three, we should have four single crochet stitches. So now we're going to yarn over and chain up one, and turn our work. The wrong side of the fabric is now facing us and we are ready for row four. To do row four, we're going to do two single crochet decreases. So insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, Insert into the second, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops and that's your single crochet decrease completed. And we'll do that one more time. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. 
insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook and we're yarning over and pulling through all three loops on our hook. At the end of row four, you should have two stitches. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. At the end of row four, you should have two uh, stitches. So now we're ready to move on to row five. We're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And now the right side of the fabric is facing us. Moving into row five, we're going to do one single crochet decrease. So we're inserting into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the second, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now, uh, the way that this is, is different from the other ear flap is that we're only we're not going to finish off now. We're going to move on to creating the straps of our ear flaps and the edging for our hat. So we're going to start with doing strap one and we're going to do that by doing a chain of 17. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through the loop, that's one. Yarn over, pull through again, that's two. We're gonna to continue to do this till we have 17 chains. If you'd like longer ear flap straps, then you can chain as many as you'd like. So we're going, that's two, we're three, Seven, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So I have my chain of seventeen, and we're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. So we never count the loop, the yarn that's on our hook. We're always going to skip that. We're going to never count the immediately first. Um, we're never going to work into this first chain here we're always going to start in the second so starting into the second chain from the hook we're going to insert our hook into that chain yarn over and pull up a loop you should have two loops on your hook then you're going to pull the loop you just pulled up through the loop on your hook and that is your slip stitch completed and we're going to do this all the way up our chain so working into the next chain we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop then we're going to pull that loop through the loop on our hook and that's your next slip stitch completed. Insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to pull that loop through the loop on our hook. We're just going to continue to do this slip stitch into every chain on the way back up to our hat. If you've done a longer strap than what I've done here, your stitch count will be different than mine. However, uh, as long as you're just placing one slip stitch into each chain, you should be good to go. So I've done all of my slip stitches up to my up my chain. I have 17 slip stitches and now I'm back at the end of my ear flap and we're going to start working our, our edging for our hat. So we're going to work four single crochets down the left side of our ear flap here. So we're going to insert our hook into the side of the fabric, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet. Now this also joins your strap to your hap, hap, my hap, my goodness, joins it to your hat, making it more secure. So there's one, and we're going to just, there's no right or wrong place to put it. Just try to place your single crochets as evenly as possible down the side of the fabric. So we have four single crochets. So there's one, we're gonna insert here, two, there's three and four. So now that I've worked down the side of my ear flap, I'm back to the uh, body of the hat and I'm going to single crochet um, in each stitch across. There should be 20 stitches from this point to the next ear flap. Nope, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. There's four. eight, twelve, 
16. All right, so we've done our 20 single crochets across our hat. This is what it looks like at this point. And we're now at our second ear flap. Let me tuck this, these tails in here so you can hopefully see that a little better. So we're at our second ear flap here. So now we're going to work uh, four single crochets up the right side here of ear flap one. So again, there's no like perfect place to put it, just evenly single crochet four up this side of the ear flap. So I'm just going to work my first stitch here. Then my second. my third, oops, third, and my fourth. So now I'm at the top of my ear flap here and I'm ready to do my second strap. So I'm going to do another chain of 17. If you did more chains on the other side, uh, make sure that you're chaining an the same amount of uh, chains on your second ear flap here so your ear your straps are even. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop. There's one and I'm going to continue to do this till we have 17. So we're at three, eight, 12, and 17. So now I'm going to turn my work so I can work into the chain. So I've got my chain here. I never count the working yarn. I'm going to count over two. There's one and two. Inserting my hook into the second chain from the hook. I'm going to try and angle this a little better here. So we never count the yarn that's on our hook. We are always going to count starting in this first chain here. So we're going to count over one and two, and we're going to insert our hook into that second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook, and then you're going to pull the loop that you just pulled up through the loop, other loop on your hook. And that's your slip stitch completed. So we're going to insert our hook into the next chain here, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then pull that loop through the loop on your hook, and that's your second slip stitch completed. And we're going to slip stitch in every chain up the, the or, yeah, in every chain back up until you reach the ear flap. So I just finished all my slip stitches for my strap, and I have the left side of the uh, first ear flap here that I'm going to be working down. So I'm going to place one single crochet into, uh, sorry, four single crochets down the edge of the ear flap here. And again, there's no perfect place to, pl to place it. I'm just going to pick up this yarn tail here. There's one, two, three, and four. So there's my four single crochets down my ear flap. It should look like this now. And this, these single crochets we're working down each edge kind of evens it out and gives it a more polished look. So now we are back to the body of our hat and there should be 16 stitches between the first ear flap and the second ear flap. So what we're going to do is we're going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches. We're just working 16 single crochets across the body of the hat here.
So I just finished my 16th stitch and I'm at the second ear flap here. And what I'm going to do here, or the other ear flap, this is technically ear flap one. And what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet four up the side of this ear flap here. So I'm just going to work one single crochet into the ends of the rounds here. There's one, two, three, and four. And now that I'm done, I'm going to cut a tail of at least four to six inches and cut my yarn. And then I'm going to pull the yarn tail all the way through my last stitch. And now I'm going to grab my tapestry needle and thread it, thread the yarn onto the needle. And I'm going to finish off with an invisible finish. And so what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to insert my um, yarn into the um, chain here. And I'm going to pull that yarn tight and then I'm going to insert my hook, or my goodness, insert my tapestry needle through the top of the last stitch here, pick up the back loop and bring the yarn out to the back of the fabric. Then I'm gonna pull that taut so it looks like there's a little stitch there. And then I can just proceed with weaving in my ends for my um, trim here. All right, so I'll finish weaving that in later, but I'll take this aside. Pardon the tails, but this is what your ear flap hat should look like at this point. We've got our little uh, ear strap or ear flap straps. We've got an ear flap on each side, and we've got all of our little stripes. So I'm going to weave in my ends, and then I'll be back in just a moment, and I'll show you how to make your pom pom and how to sew it on to your hat. All right, so we're ready to make our pom-pom. I've got my pom-pom maker and I'm using the lighter color of yarn for my pom-pom. So we're going to open up the arms of our pom-pom maker and we're going to start wrapping with our yarn. If you don't have a pom-pom maker, you can use a piece of cardboard. Um, I've even seen people use their phones or forks, um, whatever you know, you've got handy that you're able to use. I really recommend these Clover pom-pom makers because it does make them so much easier and you can make many pom-poms in a consistent size. Anyways, so we've got the light colored yarn and we're just going to start wrapping one of the sets of arms. Doesn't matter, we're going to eventually wrap both of them. So we're just going to wrap our yarn over and over again until this uh, set of arms is full. All right, so I'm happy with how full my um, arms are here of yarn. And so I'm just going to wrap my yarn until I'm over at the open edge that is not attached to the pom-pom maker. Then I'm gonna close my arms of my pom-pom maker and I'm going to take the tail and bring it between the two arms and through out to the other side of the pom-pom maker. So now I can begin to wrap my second set of arms. And so I'm just going to start wrapping this second set here. And again, I'm just going to keep wrapping it back and forth, back and forth until it is full. All right, so my second side is sufficiently full. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close the arms of my pom-pom maker and then I'm going to cut my yarn. And this is my favorite part about the pom-pom maker so that I can put that down and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to cut a uh, piece of yarn that's probably at least 10 inches to 12 inches long and I'm going to cut a piece off. And I'm going to set this off to the side here so that way I will have it handy when I need it in just a moment. So I'm going to grab my pom-pom maker 
and I've got my scissors and I'm going to cut along the side of the pom-pom maker. Um, when we start cutting, you'll find that there is a small uh, ridge between the two arms and we're essentially just going to cut along that ridge. So I've got my scissors, I'm going between the arms here and I'm just going to start cutting. I'm going to want a pretty decently sharp pair of scissors for this. I'm just cutting along this edge from one side to the other. Now I'm going to flip my pom-pom maker over and repeat what I just did on the opposite side here. All right, so you can see here that I've got both sides cut and I am ready to tie it up. Now we're going to take our piece of yarn that we cut and I'm, I like to fold it in half and find the center point of the yarn and I'm going to place that center point into the groove of the pom pom maker. So you can see this groove here, we're going to place the yarn in through there and push it down until we meet resistance and then I'm going to flip my pom pom maker up. I'm going to hold on to the pom pom maker and pull on the tail so it's nice and tight. Then I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to grab the two ends and tie a knot in the pom pom maker. All right, so I've got one part of the knot and now the second and I'm pulling that as tight as possible. So now that I got that first knot I'm going to take my yarn tails bring them through the edges on the pom-pom maker and pull them clear to the opposite side and I'm going to tie another knot. So when I was learning to make pom-poms, and if you participated in last year's crochet along, you've heard this tip already, but I'm going to share it again. Um, when I was learning to make pom-poms, I was taught that you should tie a minimum of four knots, and you want to tie the, a knot at each compass point. So if you looked at the top of your pom-pom maker, and you imagine that there was a compass on your pom-pom maker, you want to tie a minimum of four knots, one at north, one at south, one at east, and one at west. That helps to keep the pom-pom secure, as secure as possible, and I have not had a pom-pom fall apart ever. So um, if you want to tie more than that, you can, but I I always have success with just the four tied at those points. So at this point, I've now tied at north and south. So now I'm going to take my yarn tails and I'm going to pull them so they are both out at the side of the pom-pom at either east or west. And again, I'm going to tie another knot. When you're tying your knot, you want to tie it as tightly as possible without breaking your yarn. So there's one. And two. Then I'm going to flip the pom-pom maker over and pull the yarn tails to the opposite side. Pull them through as tightly as I can. And then tie another knot. Sorry, it keeps wanting to scoot closer to me when I'm tying these knots here. All right, so I've got my knots and I feel confident enough to now remove the pom-pom from the maker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the arms of my pom-pom maker. All right, now I'm going to take both halves and just pull it apart. So now my pom-pom is completed. I'm going to grab these yarn, long yarn tails and I'm going to hold the pom-pom at the base with those tails out of the way because I'm going to use my scissors to do some trimming and I don't want to cut those tails because these are going to be the tails that I use to secure the pom-pom onto the hat. So I'm just going to uh, work around my pom-pom and give it a nice little trim. I'm going to cut any stragglers. 
anything that kind of sticks out too much. Doesn't have to be perfect. I like to pinch the sides of the pom-pom together and just kind of start trimming. I can, I tend to be a little uh, OCD about my pom-poms, even though I'm like, don't worry about it. Um, if I start trimming, I will continue to trim and trim and trim and trim. Um, so I've been trying really hard to just say, you know what, this is good enough and not worry about it too, too much. So once you're happy with your pom-pom and your trimming, you're ready to attach it to your hat. So I'm going to get my little cuttings out of the way and bring in our hat. So I'm going to take the tails of our pom-pom here and I'm going to attach one of the, the strands to the needle. Then I'm going to flip up my hat and find the top of the hat. I like to have the front of it facing me and I'm just going to insert my needle into one of these side stitches in round two. You can go through the center, but I like to go into round two and have my pom-pom sit over top of round one. So now that I've got that pulled through, I'm going to grab the other yarn tail. I'm going to thread that onto my needle. And I'm going to bring that through the opposite stitch. So directly across from the stitch we just used into the opposite stitch here. I guess that's not round two, that's round one. But we're, we're working into the stitches I should on either side of your magic circle in round one. So that now that they're both in the inside of the hat, I'm gonna turn this inside out so we have a better view. So this is the inside of my hat. I've got both of these yarn tails from my pom-pom here. And you know what? I It's a doll's hat. I'm just gonna tie a knot. If you don't want to tie a knot, you can weave in your ends, but honestly, tiny little knot, it's not gonna make a big deal. So I've got my little knot tied. I can tie another knot if I really want to. I'm going to take a look. This is my test to see if, if it's secure or not. If it wiggles too much, then I'm not too happy with it. Then sometimes I'll take my tail, come back up through the top of the hat, come back up through the top of the hat with one of my tails. I'll go through the center of the pom-pom from one side to the next. And then I'll go back down into the hat right underneath that pom-pom, ideally in the same stitch that I used the first time. Flip that back out. Then I'm going to pull that yarn tail in and I'm going to pull that tight because I don't want that pom-pom to have too much movement. Now that it's tight, I'm going to maintain tension while I tie another knot. And now I'll check it again. And it's not going anywhere, so it's all good. I can cut my tails and I'm all done my ear flap hat. So that's it for ear flap hat. And uh, it's all good to go. I'll weave in my ends now and I can place it onto my doll. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you like free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com. Thanks so much for watching friends. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.